Well, the world still apparently goes round, even though we're in our backyards and in our living rooms here as the coronavirus continues to affect all parts of the world, including, of course, sports are one of our favorite pieces of entertainment. But there is still live sports on TV. Devin Henry here, your host of the Inside Lane. And to talk about that live sport, it's in the virtual world, though. The NASCAR iRacing Pro Invite Series, real life race car drivers racing the most realistic racing simulator in the world. To join us talking about the Pro Invite Series, he's a four time ARCA Midwest Tour champion, a three time Governor's Cup champion, and the number one rated iRacer on the platform. Driver of the Nice Motorsports number 45 Chevy Silverado. From Seymour, Wisconsin, it's Ty Majeski. Ty, thanks for joining me, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. All right, man. So I got to ask, with all this time that you guys have had off since you guys were sent home a few Fridays ago in Atlanta, how many hours have you spent on iRacing? Can you give me a number? Uh, No, I can't. (laughs) I've lost count a long time ago. Uh, We're definitely a run out of things to do. Uh, I was uh, stuck in Charlotte for a while, and I just recently uh, came back to Wisconsin, where I'm from, to to be with friends and family during this uh, this crazy and unforeseen uh, time. So um, I've definitely been doing a lot of iRacing. I went to GoPro Motorplex, which is a local racetrack in Charlotte, quite a bit, uh, messing around there with my little uh, road course go-kart and um, trying to find things to keep us all busy. GoPro Motorplex, of course, part owned by our own Arizonan, Michael McDowell. Always love hearing about that place. You've already had a pretty crazy NASCAR career driving for Roush Fenway Racing in the Xfinity Series. That shot folds up. Last year, you went ARCA Racing, won half of your races, finding some success. And then this year, racing for Nice Motorsports, a team that we know can go out and fight for a championship. How have you guys been meshing so far, only two races into the season, with this new team to hopefully be in the championship four come November here at Phoenix Raceway? It's been great. Um, they uh, they remind me a lot of uh, a lot of myself growing up racing. They they do a lot with a little, and um, and, and they're racers. They are racers to the core. Um, a lot of these bigger uh, race companies um, at four o'clock, they're all lined up ready to leave. These guys do what it takes to get the trucks right and get them done right. And um, and, and like I said, they're racers. Um, to the core and 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 I really really appreciate that we meshed together well um, They're a great group of guys and uh, we're only two races in obviously had some bad luck at uh, At Daytona ended up on our lid and and then in Vegas. Uh, we just we just missed it. So um, We were really looking forward to going to Atlanta. I thought we uh, we fixed a lot of the things that we missed at uh, at Vegas and uh, we were looking to start that good stretch of races with uh, Atlanta homestead in texas and put a good stretch of races together but uh, unfortunately uh that's getting uh paused for now and, and hopefully we'll go back to those venues and and race those uh those races later in the year and with only two races into the season how do you stay prepared and fit both mentally and physically during this time off so that you're ready to go racing whenever the time comes yeah that's uh that's part of the reason why i bought that that go-kart to go gopro uh stuff happens so quick. I mean, you are flying in those carts, uh, top speed of around, uh, 70 to 75 miles an hour, just on that little track. And you're obviously right on the ground. So it, it feels like you're going faster than you are in a, in a NASCAR doing 180. Um, just the sense the speed sensation, how quick things happen, how precise you have to be, uh, with your inputs keeps you sharp. And, uh, it's also physically demanding, uh, doing 20 laps there. It gets more wore out and tired. Um, than doing a 200 lap NASCAR race. So um, that's that's a good training tool that I like to use. And obviously I use um, eye racing to, to keep myself sharp behind the wheel and uh, just doing simple, simple, you know, regular uh, cardio workouts um, outside of a racing vehicle uh, to, to make sure I'm ready to go when, when this thing gets resumed. Naturally, we got to talk about your iRacing origins. Of course, the Pro Invite Series live on Fox on Sunday. You started in 2011, and now they're on your late model. They're on your truck car. Can you take it through that journey of starting and then having them sponsor you on a national level now? Yeah, so I started out uh, back in 2011, like you mentioned. Um, mostly, I've always mostly stayed on the short tracks, mostly for the reason because I always had a, a cheaper laptop, and my computer really could not even take uh, more than 20 to 25 cars at a time and, and the bigger racetracks. So I've always primarily stayed on the short tracks. 
um, just because a that's what my roots were and, and b because that's really all my equipment could could feasibly handle um, so I've, I've made a name for myself on iRacing racing through the short tracks and um, and you know the way the sponsorship all got set up was uh, they 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 thought that the i rating got capped at nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine and um, one of my buddies from um, that I one of my teammates actually on the iRacing service emailed iRacing and said, Hey, this kid made it to uh, 10,000 iRacing. <laughs> like what? No way. <laughs> and, uh, and they, they looked it up and sure enough, and they got a dialogue going with them and they decided to sponsor uh, my real life super late model. And they've been a sponsor of mine since uh, February of 2015. Uh, it's been a great partnership with them. They've obviously have been a, a big supporter of mine um, in the real world. Uh, as well as virtually, um, I use iRacing uh, almost daily to um, better myself uh, on the racetrack. And, um, you know, iRacing is a great way to uh, network with people. I've met guys like Dale Jr., TJ Majors, and, and others on the service that have helped get me to where I am today in the real world. So um, to see those two kind of cross-pollinate and, and um, help myself, um, on, on just my racing career in general uh, has been really neat to see. And, um, you know, like I said, iRacing is a great platform. And they've been a big supporter of mine. They debuted uh, when, I made, when I made my NASCAR Xfinity debut uh, with Rush Fenway Racing at Iowa Motor Speedway in 2017. They were the sponsor um, for that race as well. And now continuing that relationship um, into the truck series, they're doing um, – five to six races uh for myself this this upcoming season uh so really excited to to continue that relationship with them and um hopefully put them in victory lane nearly one million people watch the iRacing racing race with live real life race car drivers racing them nearly a million people live on fs1 on sunday and now going to be on network fox for the foreseeable future how are the upcoming weeks going to change the iRacing community? Well, uh, I think even before everything happened with, with uh, the virus, uh, eSports e and, and iRacing specifically uh, has been growing exponentially uh, the last few years. You, can, you see companies like Coke and Peak, Antifreeze, big, you know, billion dollar companies get involved in behind iRacing and eSports. And, and now with um, with everything happening uh, worldwide, you're seeing it grow way quicker at a very fast pace, and it's really cool to see it getting the attention that it deserves. Um, iRacing puts out a great, realistic product, and you're hearing it um, from real-life NASCAR drivers. And um, for them to get to to get put on this stage on national television um, with the who's who of NASCAR, it's a great combination. And um, it's a great opportunity for iRacing and all the work they've put in over, over all these years. Um, they certainly deserve it, and uh, I'm proud to be proud to have been a part of it uh, to this point, and, and will continue to be a part of it in the future. For now, at least, we think that championship weekend here at Phoenix Raceway will be November 6th, 7th, and 8th. At least it is for now, but looking forward to that. You have experience there in the Truck Series last year, also the Arco West Series last year as well. But unlike the Cup Series, unlike the Xfinity Series, you guys in the truck series don't get to see Phoenix Raceway until the championship race comes in November. How does your experience in two races last year kind of help you out if you're fighting for a championship come November here at Phoenix Raceway? Yeah, that, that'll be absolutely a huge advantage uh, for myself, not going in, uh, not knowing what to expect. That'll be obviously shorten the learning curve for us um, as, a, as a team and me as a driver. Um those trucks race a lot different than what the Arkham cars do or um, even the company Xfinity cars. So um, to have that knowledge and, and kind of know what, we're looking for, what I'm looking for in the truck and what we need to improve on from last November, uh, to have a sense of all that uh, will definitely give us um, or put us at less of a disadvantage going back there. Uh, so really looking forward to, to the NASCAR playoffs this year. Hopefully we'll find ourselves uh, battling for a championship in Phoenix, and hopefully we'll, I'll be able to utilize some of that knowledge I learned uh, last November. Talking to Ty Majeski, NASCAR Truck Series driver for Nice Motorsports, and of course, one of the favorites when it comes to the iRacing NASCAR Pro Invite Series. Before we let you go, though, got to do a, something I do with every single driver. It's called Quick Time. I got some rapid-fire questions for you. Looking for some answers in return. You ready to set quick time, Ty? That's right. All Let's right, go. man. First thing, 
favorite track to drive at regardless of car? Oh, I would say Wisconsin International Raceway in Wisconsin. It's uh, got a ton of character and uh, close to home for me. Uh, hometown track. All right. This one's a trick question because there's something behind it. Who is the second rated, the second highest rated I racer since you're number one? I'm number two as well. Yeah. Okay. So why, why are you number two too? You created a second account called Tyler Majeski, and yep. then is, I don't even think it's active anymore, but you just pulled up to number two. Why did you make a second I racing account? Honestly, man, I wanted to race. Uh, it was, it was beginning to come come too easy for me starting up front so i made a second account so i could start in the back and have some fun and pass some cars and then i started continually winning at that i'm like well geez now i gotta try and uh make it to number two as well and so i just kept racing <laughs> eventually got there and uh i still that account is still active i don't race on it too much anymore i obviously stay on time mostly but uh but yeah just, it just honestly it just kind of happened <laughs> incredible just one and two J- just for fun just for fun because it's so easy right yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> so we always talk about your i rating but did you know there is a driver other than you in the oval top 10 who has earned a top 15 in the nascar gander rv and outdoor truck series Name that driver. I would say Timmy Hill. Not Timmy Hill. This one is weird. Mm. It's last night's World of Outlaw Series iRacing winner. Logan Seavey is at oh, number Logan eight. Seavey. okay. With yeah, 8,615. Okay. He was eighth at Eldora in 2018. Yeah, that, that one, uh, I totally forgot. He was uh, he ran made a truck series start, so that one definitely threw me for a loop. Yeah, I can't believe that he runs way more oval than he does dirt oval. So that that one surprised me entirely because he's known for all of his dirt racing. Well, so when dirt originally came out, it actually counted towards asphalt oval I rating. Really? Um, and then and then it got separated maybe six or nine months after dirt actually came out. So a lot of those dirt guys actually built up their oval I rating, even though it was on dirt. And then when it switched, you know, they don't run any asphalt, so it just kind of stays constant there. Um, so that's kind of how a lot of those dirt guys, um, got pretty high up. So boom, now, now in the top 10, just as easy as that. <laughs> <laughs> All you right. Go. So something cool about I racing is that there's going to be plenty of guys who can run a cup series car at the same Texas motor speedway that you are going to on Sunday all weekend long. So can you give some of us guys some tips who are going to be trying to race those cup series cars at Texas against all of our buddies on I racing? The draft is huge. Uh, you're obviously wide open through three and four, a little bit of crack of the throttle in one and two. Um, and draft is going to be absolutely huge. So um, you're going to have to time your runs and, and be smart about uh, when you take advantage of them and when you don't. Got to have help. All right, Ty. Well, hey, appreciate the time, man, especially while I know that you're probably training, getting ready, going to try to pull the upset on all the Cup Series guys on Sunday when you guys race the Pro Invite Series at Texas Motor Speedway live on Fox, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And of course, man, see you championship weekend here in November. Appreciate the time, Ty. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. This was the Inside Lane on Sports 360 AZ.